<laughs> Hello, beautiful soul. And so I'm sitting here on my porch in beautiful California. As you see, this is our balcony kind of hanging off of Tom and I's bedroom. And so I get to look out right now. I don't have any chairs, so I'm kind of like sitting on the floor on a blanket. But it's just as comfortable and enjoyable because it's warm and sunny, and yet I feel the beautiful breeze. And so as I was kind of sitting here, I'm looking at the beautiful sparkly A Course in Miracles. And... Um, I'm kind of settled into the principles of miracles and there is one principle in particular that is speaking to me so directly right now and it, it is so because of um, the experience I had just the other day so I kind of want to express this to the best of my ability share this principle and then to see what kind of message came forward <clears throat> but uh, I guess I guess yeah first the principle that um, I landed on was principle number 26 and let's remember this is from the sparkly course of miracles so there's a few kind of um, extra sentences and components in here that were taken from the original dictation that were um, kind of re-put back in this book the way Jesus intended it to be and this is such a crucial crucial point that is literally used in my mind as a continual what's the word stabilizer so to speak, you know, to always re-remind me of my position in in um, salvation and so that I don't, you know, get ahead of myself or see myself as not where I really am and um, so I guess this is just a tool for me and so I wanted to extend it. So here's the first sentence of principle 26 and then we'll move forward with it. But it says, miracles represent freedom from fear. Atoning really means undoing. The undoing of fear is an essential part of the atonement value of miracles. Okay, so as we pause here after this first sentence, it's um, it's a powerful principle. This is literally like something that we can um, use as a guidepost for ourselves. Miracles represent freedom from fear. So atoning is really an undoing. It is undoing the fear, which is an essential part of the atonement um, value of miracles. And so the atonement is literally like the principle. It is the literal act. It is the undoing of the fear. But the miracle is the means to the undoing. So the miracle is, in essence, it is the freedom from fear. This is what it is saying here. So that when we accept a miracle into our mind, the miracle thus undoes the fear and releases us to freedom and so the reason why this is a guidepost is because anytime that we recognize that we are in fear we also recognize that we are in need of a miracle it doesn't matter if we think that our fear is minuscule and small if we think that our fear is fleeting and not always here or if we think the fear is massive and huge and just keeps on expanding fear is fear and if we have fear, we are in need of a miracle. And that is why this is a course in miracles, because we are learning how to apply these miracles to our perception at any time of need. So for example, about three days ago now, I literally woke up in the morning and I guess you can say my ego woke up first before I did. And so I was taken on a trip from early in the morning and I felt it and I just let myself go on this ride and what it was is I was in such just emotional state you know I just couldn't stop crying um, I couldn't stop um, being very sensitive to like what Tom would say or what was happening around me and I just realized that I got to this place of being totally paralyzed by this fear that was in my mind but what was interesting is that this fear lay dormant and, and quite often hidden um, for weeks and months at a time but then just random days you know something will happen where it gets triggered and so it was triggered and I noticed that this fear clouded my vision of everything that was happening and that this has been like a pattern for me this is a continual pattern that seems to arise um, and it is a, a fear of um, basically accepting my whole part completely and entirely in God's plan without fear. You know, I, I have accepted it, but I have also accepted my thoughts about it. 
So I'm going through a process of becoming aware of the thoughts that I have around accepting my part in God's plan and letting all of those thoughts be undone and removed. And so the thoughts that came to my awareness that day, um, actually I wrote a lot of it in my journal, um, but predominantly, you know, what was shown to me was the ideas of, of relationships and that we are all given a specific part to play here. And mine is specifically with the UMP, the Universal Mediation Program right now. And so I've realized that it's all about my relationships, my relationship to the UMP and my relationship to Tom. And the thoughts that I had accepted in these relationships were that of inequality, that I'm not quite yet good enough, I haven't learned enough, I don't know enough yet, yet, I don't know how I'm going to share this yet. And so all of these thoughts became blocks to the recognition that I said yes to this part, and thus there is nothing that God will give me that I cannot do. And so for that whole day, I literally got to see all of my thoughts of inequality, where I saw myself as less than Tom, but also where I saw myself as greater than Tom, because they were both sides of the coin in there. And um, I, I really got to see where I saw this ump, the ump project that's been given us as separate from me. I literally got to see how I was afraid of its magnitude, and thus afraid of my own magnitude. And I also got to see that this isn't something just to give to the world. This is something that's first for me. This is here for me to heal my mind with it and accept a miracle with it instead. And, and so that's what I did. And it was almost like the miracle was such a subtle and natural change of mind that I slowly drifted off to sleep. And it wasn't until I woke up the next day where I was like free from the past. I didn't even think about yesterday and how poofy my eyes were and how much I cried all day and, and all that intense fear that I went through. That was gone because where I was in this next morning was just a space of openness and willingness and stillness. And instantly what happened is I went downstairs and I started researching on the computer. Whereas just the day before I'm tripping my, myself out saying, I don't know, I can't do this, I can't research. And so now I go downstairs and I start, start researching. And through my research, I, I am excited by what I'm coming across. And I ended up finding that there is a conflict resolution day on October 17th, 2014. And it literally is like an association of people that are here to introduce conflict resolution into this world and into schools and uh, into communities. And they want to do whatever they can to incorporate new tools and new technologies into this, this um, this environment or this association and so when I saw this day I share it with Tom and it's like oh my god that's it that's our release date that's our release date for the ump we didn't know how we were gonna set it we didn't know how we were gonna plan it we didn't know how we could possibly choose the day but this day was now chosen for us on the conflict resolution day and for me, I realized that this was an example of me receiving that change in perception because I moved from being so terrified, absolutely frightened to do my part, and the very next day doing my part so effortlessly that it brings me to the recognition of, oh my God, this is actually coming complete right now, and I can step fully into my part without fear and be happy, be absolutely happy that this is what is happening. So I wanted to almost like share with everybody that when we are in fear, no matter how small or no matter how big, that there is a correction to it but the correction doesn't always come the way that we think that it's going to come you know a big booming loud voice or you know something in form is going to show up or you know someone's going to say something to us you know those aren't miracles a miracle is a shift in mind from fear to love it literally is a shift from separation to joining it literally is a shift from the ego mentality of me of i of fear to that of we of god of community and connection and uh that's what happened um, to be. So here I am sitting completely excited and all day just working on, you know, finishing off all of our, our presentations that we're going to do to share the um with the world and this association and um, schools and and so I'm finally at this place where I feel I'm ready to extend this this miracle that I've received in my mind and it's been months that I've been talking about it but it's only been like now that it came around again as the cycle always comes around for me to finally choose differently so I did want to kind of complete um, this principle because it ties in all of what I'm talking about in a more practical manner that you can apply at home as well and so the second part of um, uh, principle 26 um, Actually, I'll read the first part again and then into the second part. So, miracles represent freedom from fear. 
Atoning really means undoing. The undoing of fear is an essential part of the atonement value of miracles. The purpose of the atonement is to restore everything to you, or rather to restore it to your awareness. You were given everything when you were created, just as everyone was. When you have been restored to the recognition of your original state, you naturally become a part of the atonement yourself. As you share my, as in Jesus, as you share my inability to tolerate the lack of love in yourself and others, you must join the great crusade to correct it. The slogan for the crusade is listen, learn, and do. Listen to my voice, learn to undo error, and do something to correct it. And so as I pause on this second paragraph here, this is where the real meat of this, this principle comes in and, and where I feel it's most practical. Because Jesus is reminding us that the purpose of the atonement is to restore everything to you. Everything to you. The kingdom is everything. The kingdom is joy. God has given us everything. And so when we say yes to a miracle instead of, an, instead of a grievance, we literally are restored to the atonement, which literally is the restoration of our mind to the one mind. And in the one mind is everything. Because in the one mind is God. In the one mind is the love of God. In the one mind is the will of God. In the one mind is the will we share with God because we are of one mind. And so... Because we are restoring our minds to the atonement, we literally are given everything. So whenever we are in this place of fear or lack, we know we're in need of a miracle. Because in truth, we've been given, we've been given everything. Jesus is also saying that, saying that once we recognize our original state, which is being given everything, then we naturally become a part of this atonement ourselves, which means applying the miracles in our minds and extending the minds to our brother, extending the miracles to our brothers and sisters. And so this means that we have to, we can't tolerate anymore the lack of love in ourselves or others. We can't tolerate the lack of love in ourselves or others anymore. And this is what happened to me three days ago. I could not tolerate it any longer. Every single month that would come back around, around my time of month, and I'd have some sort of crazy mental breakdown where I'd get so upset in my fear that I've been hiding from myself and denying from myself. And I'd keep it there. You know, I wasn't ready yet to ask for that correction, to ask for that miracle. So I'd get stuff back down. I'd go back around the circle until I was ready to experience it again. But we have to get to that point where we're, it's totally intolerable. I can't tolerate this lack of love in myself or others anymore. And this is when we get to join the Great Crusade. And the Great Crusade is to listen, learn, and do. We listen to Jesus' voice, we learn to undo error, and we do as guided. And this is what A Course in Miracles is preparing us for. It is preparing us to listen to this voice, this one voice that comes from the one mind. And we do so through practice, through our willing practice of these lessons and so forth. But the first practice is of listening. And what I did all day long is I listened. You know, I'd share my thoughts for a little while with Tom and Teddy, you know, and then I'd come upstairs and I'd be with Jesus and I'd pray and I'd ask for help. And this was the first time that I spent all day asking and praying. All other days before, I spent them fighting my fear. Or this was the first time that I was asking and praying, listening and listening and listening, listening and listening. And then I started to learn. And I, and I was shown the correlation between all of the times that I said no. I saw a correlation between all of the times where I had um, said that I can't do something before I actually tried to do it. You know, all the times where I doubted myself without having that faith and trust. And so I was shown that because I chose the doubt and the fear and the I can't, I'm not good enough, all of those thoughts, since I chose all of those thoughts, I was not seeing my power, my magnitude, my limitless ability to create with God. And so I had to ask for the healing of my mind to see the truth of myself so that all my old beliefs fall away. But I was only willing to do that the other day. And so, once we listen to the voice, we learn to undo error, then we can do something to correct it. 
right? and that's what i feel happened the next day when i you know went on those websites, did research, and i found exactly what i was looking for you know that is the effect, that's the fruits of me receiving you know that's the inspired doing, the inspired guidance that happens because we listened and because we learned the doing happens naturally, the doing happens effortlessly all we have to do is be willing to listen and learn and then the doing happens but the doing is part of the miracle because the miracle is the extension it is the extension right remember that a miracle is a universal blessing from god through me to my brothers it is an extension a miracle is a universal blessing from god through me to my brothers the extension the doing is a big part of this but that happens you know once we've listened and learned and joined our minds with jesus and god and then the doing is natural so here is the last paragraph here of Principle 26. The power to work miracles belongs to you. I will provide the opportunities to do them, but you must be ready and willing, since you are already able. Doing them will bring conviction and the ability, since conviction really comes through accomplishment. The ability is the potential, the achievement is the expression, and the atonement is the purpose and I think why this speaks to me too is because my biggest core thought that was blocking me from the recognition of my ability is me saying I can't do it you know by saying I can't do it you know that blocked me from recognizing that I am already able and then Jesus is saying here that Jesus provides the opportunities for these miracles to happen but we have to say yes we have to be willing we have to be able finally the other day I was willing and able before that, I said I was willing and able, but I still wanted to hold on to the ideas that I couldn't do it, that I wasn't ready yet, that it's not time. And what's amazing is that I ended up, you know, receiving the correction in my mind and then having the experience the next day of, of coming across the conflict resolution day and then literally having that as the end goal. Like now we can work towards this and have the ump complete by October 16. And it's like, holy macaroni, you know, that's the, that's the doing, that's the extension, that's the achievement, that's, that's the completion of it. You know, our guidance with the Universal Mediation Program was to complete it, make it available, and give it away to the world. And so we're completing it. It's almost done. It will be completed by October 16th, and then it's given to the world. You know, this is the natural outpouring, the natural expression and extension of God's love. And it's through his miracles in this world, right? Universal blessing. A miracle is a universal blessing from God through me to my brothers. This is what the ump is. Yay! See, I'm finally seeing the wholeness and the fullness and the power of this without my own thoughts and judgments rested upon it. And it is so freeing. Oh my God, it's so freeing. And so that is principle 26, beautiful souls. Miracles represent freedom from fear. And I can tell you I feel free. I can tell you I've been released. I can tell you I am so thankful. And um, I'm really looking forward to everything that is to come from what I have said yes to. You know, I'm already seeing the fruits of it. And the fruits are just growing even more plentiful and beautiful and colorful and for everyone. And so for that, I'm grateful. So thank you, beautiful souls, for enjoying this time on the balcony of California. And now it's getting so hot. I'm feeling the warmth on my legs. I'm ready to go inside now. And so I love you, beautiful souls. Thank you. God bless you. And I will see you soon. Bye.